Welcome back to the Somebody Like You podcast, where I just record 20, I recorded 25 minutes of this podcast with my microphone (laughs) muted. I just had the most epic conversation with myself, and it was all muted. Well, I guess I get to restart, and I guess I have an idea of what I want to be talking about. Oh, I'm just somebody like you, and this is this is my podcast. Uh, That brings me to my sponsored post. Um, Somebody like you, mental health coaching. If you're living in a chaotic world and in a chaotic mind and you're looking for some relief and a way to tap into the best version of yourself, check out the link in the description. Back to it. Um, That's very funny. Uh, Well, what I was talking about before I was um, so abruptly interrupted by common sense and observation of a muted microphone was what I'm doing and what I'm doing with this channel, what I'm doing with this podcast. And I have a cool little operation slash mission I'm on. Um, So as of June 19th, I started a mission called uh, Operation YouTube Pay My Rent. Um, And what that is, is my push to get monetized on YouTube and not only get monetized, but to start making enough money for YouTube to literally just cover my rent. And as I was juggling this idea of how to, I don't even want to say market it, um, but how to like present it and start strategizing for it. I didn't want to make it sound like, uh, hey, this is a pity grab. Like, hey, I need your help to pay my rent. No, um, that's not it. It's a personal goal of mine to get monetized on YouTube and make money enough to pay my rent. And anything after that, I obviously welcome in abundance, I welcome. But the whole point is I want to be able to have that happen. And here's the reasons why. Uh, One, as my throat's closing up as I'm saying, um, and one is I want mental health to be talked about in a light more authentic and genuine to me. Um, So I'm not talking about how you talk about mental health. I want to talk about it from a genuine, fun, authentic place because mental health recently for me, what I've noticed as I create content for it is it's always this heavy thing. It's always talking about the anxiety, the depression, the grief, the sadness, the stress, which yes, is part of mental health. Um, but we don't always have to have this somber mood to it. This depressed feeling, this depressed mood that surrounds it all the time is what if we can be artists and be creative and like, hey, we can talk about these things in a really genuine, authentic way and letting ourselves know like, it's okay to feel those things. Um, It's okay not to feel our best. It's okay to feel anxious. It's okay to have panic attacks. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, Now, in the moments, it does not feel okay. And I'm certainly well aware of that. But the whole point, uh, or my first point of this is to start breaking the stigma of how we have to talk about mental health. I think since it became like, no, I want to start by saying this. There has been such great strides in the mental health world where businesses and corporations and all of that stuff, they, they make it a priority. Now, is that maybe just to check boxes? That I don't know. Um, but I think there's been a lot of growth in the mental health and being aware of it being you know, a disability at times, a disability for people all of the time. So I want to normalize that. I want to thank that. But I also want to say, I think it's time to become the artist and see how we talk about it. See a way in which we can start crafting the narrative of mental health and not to be some feeling of less or lesser than others because we experience these things, but own them as this is a part of us and they don't run us. They're just a part of us. Like anxiety is a feeling. It's not a personality trait. Um, just things like that. So I want to break the stigma one, two, I, I find it really important for me that, um, when I'm financially stressed, um, hence YouTube operation, YouTube pay my rent. Um, I don't feel I'm the best coach that I can be. Now, this isn't to 
toot my own horn, but I do feel that I, I'm a really good coach. I do feel that. I do feel that my relationships with my clients is so pure and so genuine, but there's this thing in me that of course thinks I can get better, that I can be a better coach for people, that I can have a bigger impact. And the one place I noticed that was sometimes it feels a little inauthentic when I'm financially stressed and I'm trying to book like back to back to back to back clients in a day, there's just no way by the end of my third client into my fourth client, I'm the best version of myself. Because every time I show up, I have to show up fresh, clean slate, present in the moment and not letting my life enter the conversation into this bubble of our coaching call I don't, can't let other coaching calls enter into this space. So when I'm financially stressed and I'm, I'm working like this to just with my coaching calls in general, I want to be better. I want to hold more authentic and genuine space for people. And that's one major reason I want Operation YouTube Pay My Rent to be a success is because I ultimately want to be the best coach, the best person, the best friend, the best brother husband like all of the i want that um so that's reason number two and reason number three once again it's to alleviate the idea that we have to be someone or something because we're told that there has to be a stigma it all comes back to the stigma it's alleviating financial stress to be a better coach and breaking the stigma. Those are my three cores. Um, oh, and I really want to get better at making authentic and genuine content for people to connect with. Because, yeah, it's all great and dandy that I want to have uh, YouTube pay my rent. Who doesn't? Um, I'm just setting out on a task to do it. But for all the people that just consume the free content and want to better their lives that way, a big goal of mine is to get better, more consistent, and provide better quality for those people. Because yeah, if we're in a financial place where you can help support me and support yourself by coaching calls or programs or whatever it is that's coming in the future, I don't know yet, that's great. But I know for myself, I got the most value from free stuff I got on YouTube, where I got lights, where I got this camera, this backdrop, like, or my backdrop, I got a keyboard with a ring light over it, a blue light and a dirty background. Um, but like the setup, like how many countless free YouTube videos I watched? Oh, well, I want to be a breath of fresh air in the mental health space where you, you come for the information, you come for the knowledge and the wisdom and all that kind of stuff, but you stay because it's relatable. It makes you feel safe. It makes you feel heard and understood and not alone. I think that's really important because I know that's who I connect with on my the YouTube videos I watch. And I know just recently that I've been connecting with things on like stoicism. I think his name's Ryan Holiday, a daily stoic. And like he makes videos, their production values are not top notch, but they're so relatable. You can tell that the effort he puts in is tremendous. But it doesn't have to be this Hollywood production of everything. I mean, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, I have a camera pointing down or pointing up from below me. Why? Because that's enough room that I ha that's the room I had on my desktop. Like, I want it to be relatable. It's not because I'm trying to be some creative. It's I'm just trying to make it work. I'm filming in a tank top that I think I just recorded a YouTube video in last night before I went to bed. Like. This is to be relatable. We want to be able to talk about things that we're enjoying, the things that we're working through. Once again, it's being, we have a canvas of mental health in front of us. And how we paint that picture is up to us. Um, and not just up to me, right? This is as much you as it is me. You're able to help paint this beautiful masterpiece of how we want mental health to be viewed in our lives and our awareness. It's not a responsibility to change everyone's mind or everyone's perspective because it's unique to them. When we get into this world of our way is right, everyone else's way is 
not good enough or not correct or anything. That's really like taking onus that we're playing God. And that's just, I, I, that's a different conversation. That's a universe conversation, which I will have on this podcast. Absolutely. Um, but coming from a place of sitting on a throne of entitlement of like my way is the best way. It's just, it's just not my style. I want to create a community in which people, I feel we have created a community. But somebody like you crew is a community of people that work through mental health and celebrate their wins. And we're all creating a canvas together. And what I love about it, it's like having multiple artists paint on a canvas, but you can distinctly see the differences in styles. It doesn't make the piece of art any worse or better. It makes it the piece of art. And what's really cool about that is we all get to be inspired by each other. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people in like the spiritual community, psychic mediums that have tremendously influenced my coaching, like my coaching career, my coaching philosophy. And what I found was there's this mental health aspect to connectedness. And then, I mean, if you read any Eckhart Tolle or Alan Watts or anything like that, you're gonna, you make that connection instantly. And that's been a really big um, stepping stone for me. Uh, even um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, like like all of these things and all of these resources have been tremendous to me. And it's from other people. It's been inspired by other people. And I just see how it's laid out a roadmap on my journey. And other people's roadmap has almost provided like GPS directions on mine. So that is really cool. And so as we go along this journey and stuff like that, I just hope people, ah, I finally got to the other point. I remember I was trying to think, it was breaking the stigma. It was uh, bettering myself as a coach, uh, the financial stress, th that stuff. But what I find really cool about it is having people share content that they relate with. Now, obviously it's only be like, hey, like, subscribe, comment, share, do all of the things. Um, all great, grand, and wonderful. Please do that. Um, but I, I want this push of, hey, if this resonated with you, or if you think this will resonate with somebody else, please send it to two people kind of thing. Um, because then it doesn't just come down to me helping people. This is just my role. This is like me as the artist. This is how I'm painting my mental piece, mental, <laughs> mental health masterpiece with you. This is my role on the team. Your role on the team may be sharing it with somebody who needs to see it, who needs to listen to it, who maybe has an hour or a 45 minute drive into work and they're like, hey, I think you'd really like this podcast. They talk about really relatable stuff. It's lighthearted, it's fun, but they talk about serious things. I think you'd benefit from it. That's you helping. That's you providing help to the people you care about. This isn't just a me thing. This isn't just me hoping people watch my stuff millions and listen to my stuff millions of times it's providing content for others to relate to and share and celebrating those who share because you're doing such a impactful job of helping someone on mental like when people recommend books that's one of the most intimate gifts you can give someone is a book recommendation it's like peeking into your soul I think the same way when it comes to memes, to videos, to content in general, to TV shows. Like how many times have you sat around a table and quoted The Office or Parks and Rec or Step Brothers? Like that's a love language. I think sharing videos, like when you share a video that you think will help somebody, and that means one, you listen to what they're going through. You understand their struggles and when you listen to something maybe I create or somebody else created and you send it to them, that lets you know I'm, I'm caring for you. I listen to you. I understand what you're, or I think I understand what you're going through. And with my best intentions, I'm sending this to you. That's what I love about the idea of a community. It's not one person getting all the glory. It's celebrating everybody and understanding we all have unique roles. No role better than the next everybody needs to understand that there's no better role here and 
our my purpose is to help others now helping others and getting paid for it it's a dream of mine money is not a bad thing i think sometimes we get taught that we can't mix the two well i'm trying to navigate a way in which i can have youtube pay the rent even if it's through like google adsense or something like that it's and then obviously i want to offer services and you know do that kind of stuff but of value to community that's what i want that's what i'm looking for um so i'm really excited to be on the journey to do that um i wanted to say that a lot of things i'm going to create it's going to be not even like a mixed bag but it's going to stay in the mental health world it's going to be talking about things that you know i'm interested in as well i think a lot of mental health connection comes with the universe comes with nature um that's a big part of my philosophy um philosophy in general is a big thing for me i love like i'm so into right now this is going to sound really funny and it's going to be a total dude moment uh really into marcus aurelius and this and stoicism now there was this thing going around the internet a couple years ago it was like or maybe it was a year ago i don't know um whenever you're watching this i don't know uh like how often do guys think about the roman empire and i didn't think about the roman empire at all so i was like i don't think about roman empire ever um well i stumbled upon a guy i think i mentioned him earlier this could have been either earlier in this podcast or when i was muted for 25 minutes on my previous podcast the podcast no one will ever hear um maybe i'll make like a silent film out of it that'd be really fun um but uh, Ryan Holiday, I think he, he runs, it's called Daily Stoic. And I stumbled upon one of his videos on YouTube. Once again, it popped up in my algorithm and I was like, what is this? Who is this? I understand Marcus Aurelius from like Gladiator. Um, and he wasn't even like a main character in Gladiator. He was just like, I'm the son of Marcus Aurelius, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna go through the whole Gladiator quote. Although I know many, if many men would quote it with me. Um, but anyway, squirrel, squirrel moment for me right there. Um, but I, I'm really into stoicism in like Rome right now. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, I'm becoming a dude that just loves ancient Rome. Not even ancient Rome. I like the five good emperors, um, learning more about them. But Marcus Aurelius is kind of my sweet spot right now. That's where I'm reading his book meditations and it's, it's a chef's kiss. Um, so like talking about that kind of stuff, talking about the universe, talking about the spiritual world, I'm friends with psychic mediums and the stuff they show me and help me with as far as intuition and tapping into like me, oh, it's been a game changer. So I want to share that with people, the universe. I'm going to drop a little bit of crazy trippy information. Like there's this idea or the it's called local uh local realism is not fundamental so what local realism is um here's a disclaimer i am not a quantum physicist i am not a scientist i am a certified mental health coach who has a strong interest and liking in these topics so i'm just sharing with you my interpretations of these things we shall now proceed so my interpretation of local realism was everything is in its place right now. My, my truck is in my driveway. Uh, my mom's car is in the garage. My dad's trees he just planted are out back. They're all there. That is local realism. And what they were saying is that, that is fundamental. What, fundament, what fundamental may mean, or what fundamental means in this case is that's baseline. That's what it is. This, that is it. Well, in 2022, I believe, um, somebody was awarded the Nobel prize that proved that wrong. So my truck's not in my driveway. My mom's car is not in her garage. My dad's trees are not there in my world. Now, I'm going to break it down to you a little bit how I understood it. Um, it's kind of like a video game. It's kind of like, you know, how everyone says, like, are we in a simulation for this? For this, uh, Donald Hoffman says it in a really cool way. 
imagine we're wearing a headset and this is our world. So imagine it's kind of like a video game for lack of better comparisons or analogies. Um, and my truck is programmed to be in the, in the driveway right now. But until I go and lay eyes on it, at that time, when I do go lay eyes on it, it then loads into my reality quickly. So I'm gonna bring up, if you're watching it on YouTube, I'm gonna bring this up, right? You can see my, my keyboard behind me. Now, I'm not looking at my desktop right now, so like my keyboard is not there until I turn around and in live times, it, it programs in. Think of it as like Grand Theft Auto and you're driving around the world and all of the buildings are programmed to be in this soft. All it is is electrodes and firing inside this motherboard circuit. That's what you're seeing. Well, what they're saying is that's the same here. Until you drive into that city or drive past that mountain or drive past that whatever, it then loads in. That's what they proved up to this point is our reality. Like that stuff is the stuff I want to talk about. Like those kind of things, because I think that does play like a crazy, imp it has a crazy impact on our mental health for good, for worse. But it's realizing like, hey, everything's not as it seems or as we've been taught. Talk about like conditioning of the mind and society and stuff like that. Huge role in our mental health. I feel like it should be talked about. And I, I like to talk about those things. So we'll be talking about that. Um, and most importantly, like sharing your experiences 100% in the comments. I would love to bring people on to talk about things or have people submit videos to talk about things. I want this YouTube channel and this operation and this podcast to be collaborative. Not with just like I say, like follower grabs from bigger accounts. I want this to be relatable for everybody. I want to celebrate together. I want... I want, I want, I want. You ever just notice, like, sometimes, like, you say, like, the I want, to, uh, we're talking about community, but, like, every other word in a sentence is, like, I want. It's like, hey, bring it together. We want. I want for us. I don't know how I reword that. But it's just something to take notice of. It's like these things, right? Like, these are everyday conversations that we may have in our head. Uh, I just want to be authentic and have them on camera and not judge myself. I... I I used to script my podcast, and if you ever go back and listen to the early, my podcast used to be called the Respectfully Selfish Podcast because I wrote a book called the Respect, How to Become Respectfully Selfish, which is like, if there's an origin story for a character, that was right before I went into deep anxiety and panic. I was going through a toxic relationship, and I got out of a toxic relationship. And I was really in victim mode at the time. And I wrote a book about it. And not just, it wasn't about the relationship. It was about how I was overcoming the things I was going through. Um, but if you go back and listen to those podcasts, it's very scripted. I wrote it out. I wrote out topics I wanted to talk about. So like, I'd be like transitioning back and forth. And that was years ago now. But now at this point, what I want to do is I want to jump on and just talk. I want to let literal intuition and flow take over and just talk about things that feel good and now there will always be topics that i probably have on my mind and stuff like that but i want it to be a free-flowing conversation i want it to feel genuine like we're sitting i'm sitting in the car with you or i'm sitting i'm sitting in bed with you talking to you before you go to sleep um like that's kind of what i want i want to be an authentic version of myself because i think me being genuine and authentic inspires others to be genuine authentic it's really hard to be genuine and authentic on a camera. As soon as you press play, um, and then you turn your microphone on, uh, it feels like you have to turn on a little bit. And what I realized for a really long time is that's what I was doing in my life when I would see certain people and do certain things. And I didn't realize who I was anymore for a really long time. And that got really scary because I think I got to a point in my life where I was desperately searching to find who I was and I didn't know where to look first. So even in saying that, it's like understanding like, yeah, being around your different people in different environments will impact who you are and what you are. But I needed to learn that. 
because I felt I was being so disingenuous to myself. Like there's just this one version of me. And if I'm surrounding myself with certain people and they're bringing out a different version, like I'm, I'm going away from me. And what I realize is like, no, I'm free flowing. When I go certain places, yeah, there's energy to a room. There's energy to people. It's going to bring out certain energy in me that goes good and bad, right? Um, or what is perceived good and bad. Um, it, it's just, I needed to learn that because I was holding myself to a standard of I am just this one thing. I am this one human. I am this one soul that ha that only acts a certain way. And for me, that was like my younger self. Like as a kid, I felt I was destined to be so incredibly special and do incredible, incredible things. And I probably credit that I credit that to my family for probably treating me that way. And then me believing that I'm destined to do amazing things because if you're loved as a kid and cr like come from that, like my trajectory was to go on to be bigger and better. Um, life hit and I got slapped around and I started to rem remind myself that I'm still that kid that he's and then when I started getting further and further away from him what, and just doing things that were so out of character for who I wanted to become, I judged myself really hard. So I want people to understand like my story, that it, how it relates to them. Now, I understand not everybody came from the same family I did. And I'm, I thank my, I'm so incredibly grateful for the family I have and the upbringing I have, but we all still go through really hard things. That's life. Um, we don't discredit people who have come up with a good upbringing and then went through hard and be like, well, you know, you had a really good family. This is no, we all go through things. So as we talk about those things and we start to uncover the lessons we've learned and we chat about them, we hold space for the things that people are going through. Um, one of a really good friend of mine mind says one of my psychic medium friends a few you're gonna hear me talk about my friend hannah the huggable healer um she loves to say like we don't yuck on somebody else's yum and i really like that uh if somebody else loves learning about fairies and mermaids and crystals and stuff like that i don't put crystals and i think crystals are really cool i think all of them are really cool but like we don't yuck on that it's like no that's somebody else's journey because I always think in a way of like, even if I don't relate to 99% of the things someone says, that leaves me 1% of growth. That 1% of, that's kind of cool. Why did I hear that? And then it may open up a whole new world. That might be the like walking through the jungle and peeling back like a leaf or a tree branch and like seeing a beautiful waterfall. Um, that 1%, we just often get caught focusing on the 99%. So it's realizing that, hey, you might not even agree with most of the things I say or relate to the things, but there might be that 1% that you do. I think that's really important to understand when we talk to other people that there's a 1% that could change our lives. Let's focus on the 1%, not the 99%. Um, so yeah, um, I'm so grateful to be in this space on this mission on this operation of youtube pay my rent and i'm really really grateful that you're here with me you're going through this with me um and that you're not alone and i'm not alone that's something i don't take for granted i don't take for granted our time together um so thank you for being here thank you for either watching or listening um, if you gained anything from this, maybe feeling like maybe a new friend or someone you can trust and relate to, or maybe just some content, I just ask that you subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, and maybe share it with two friends. If you gained value, if you think it will help somebody share it with them, let's do our role to help others. I'm doing my best to do my role. And if you find that that's part of your role, do your best to do yours. So I appreciate you tuning in to this episode of the Somebody Like You podcast. I am somebody like you, your host, and I will catch you on the next episode. Take care. Love you. Peace.